Act 5, Scene 6, and then we'll just go right into Act 5, Scene 7, because they're so short. Again, we're approaching the climax. Before the castle, um, Malcolm, Seward, Macduff, and their armies are ready to take the castle, and it actually falls very soon. Um, now near enough, your leafy screens throw down. So remember, they're carrying the, the, the leave, the, the branches to hide their numbers. That's the Burnham Wood coming to Dunsinane, and they throw them down. And show like those you are, so reveal yourself. You were the uncle. Now, there's some interesting stuff here about Seaward I mentioned, and young Seaward especially. You were the uncle, so that Seaward shall, with my cousin, your right noble son, lead our first battle. So here's the plot direction. Seaward and young Seaward are going to go make the first approach. Worthy Macduff and I, the king always says we, Worthy Macduff and we shall take a Take upon us what else remains to do according to our order. Okay, so once you guys go in, then we're gonna then we're gonna follow we're gonna follow up and do what has to be done. So Seward, the great general, remember he's already been built up a little bit. That he's 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 a pretty he's a pretty good leader. Gets ready to go. Fare you well. Do we but find the tyrant's power tonight? Let us be beaten if we cannot fight. So he's determined to to uh, to go all the way and fight until the end to get the tyrant. They're determined. Make all our trumpets speak, says Macduff. Give them all breath, those clamorous harbingers of blood and death. So the final approach, and it's the big, the trumpets blow, and the great warriors enter the castle. Act 5, five scene 7. The other side of the stage, Macbeth comes in alone, another part of the field, and there's still all the alarms. Ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum. They have tied me to the stake. I cannot fly, but bear-like I must fight the course. So Macbeth is cornered. What that means is cornered. And he's and very often they talk about uh, uh, the, the bear baiting. Have you heard that before? Um, it's this. Uh, it was an entertainment. Uh, now, it, we can judge this very, very harshly today, merely because we have movies and video games with which we can release our aggressive, violent tendencies. So I've killed many a... Uh, human and animal in many a video game, so I can't really be that what that hypocritical in, in, in calling out bear baiting as something evil. But of course it's horrible. But it was it was an entertainment. They they needed act everybody needs we love to see action and we see it in in movies. Uh, the Romans actually had uh, plays on the stage of gladiators and fights and deaths and stuff like that. And the Romans actually did literally kill people on the stage. They used the gladiators to do that. Or they, I don't, I don't know, they, they used prisoners of something. I don't know. Anyway, bear baiting was a thing in Shakespeare's day. It was a form of, of crude entertainment. Tie a bear to a stake and sick the dogs on them and watch what happens. I think there was betting going on too of some sort. Anyway, so that's the image that Macbeth says of himself. He's cornered. He's the bear that's tied to a stake and he can't move and the dogs are after him. So um, now again, ask the why A, why not B. Um, it, it's it's a little bit of it's a little bit picky to analyze this overly much, uh, but it's it, it, it's a good analysis trick. Um, if there's an image of a bear, and Macbeth is the bear, there's the A equals B. That's the the metaphor, Macbeth is a bear. So if Shakespeare is doing that, then you can ask yourself why. What 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 extra meaning does it add to our understanding of Macbeth or to the themes um, that Shakespeare bothers to call him a bear? Well, we could say he's reduced. Macbeth is reduced to an animal. He's dehumanized, and that, that I, I just bring that up because it does fit with our Voldemort idea. Uh, Voldemort becomes a snake. He becomes dehumanized when he rips his soul out uh, via the horcruxes, if you remember my other speeches. Um, yeah, uh, so yeah, he's dehumanized, he's, he's, he's reduced to an animal, and that fits because he's, he's on his way down, remember? This is it, We've, this is it, this is it. He's coming down and he's gonna die very, very soon, so he's been reduced, he's been dehumanized. Uh, I must fight the course, but he's gonna fight like a bear. What's he that was not born of woman? Such a one am I to fear or none. So again, he's clinging to the prophecies. He's clinging to his delusions. He's staying up here at the tip of the iceberg and he's refusing to acknowledge the, the, the truths that have been knocking on his noggin since the beginning. The, the, that's, the, that's the tragedy. Now, young Seward enters here. And he, he's, he's brave, he's the potential worthy hero, he could have done it, but of course we know he doesn't because we know Malcolm is set up. So this is very much like a video game where um, to get to the boss battle, and the boss battle is, um, uh, the boss battle is Macduff, uh, but 
and even in a video game, you got to go through all these minions to kill. You kill all these minions because that's the rising tension. That's the rising action. That's the fun part of the plot. It extends the plot and increases the action, makes it more fun to watch and or play. And then you get to the boss battle, and that's the big resolution that feels great. Um, now, young Seward, of course, you know is going to be slain uh, if he's if he's if he if he's going to confront um, Macbeth. But remember him, and I'm, I'm spending some time on this because it's very very interesting. He is the potential young worthy hero, but he fails like so many young young heroes. I just saw 1917, the movie, a couple of weeks ago. Beautiful, beautiful retelling of the sacrifice theme. And young Seward is basically one of those boys that dies, the, the boy that dies, the young, the young man that dies uh, in sacrifice of a good cause. And this is where we see it at the very, very end in the final scene. So not in this particular clip, but, but we're going to get there. But remember young Seward. Remember young Seward. There's a poetic statement, I suppose. Uh, so young Seward, what is thy name? Who are you? So he never, he never met this guy. Thou'lt, thou'lt be afraid to hear it. So Macbeth... He's internalized the, the the corruption. He knows that he's a beast. He knows that he's a monster. He says, "You, you, you, you If you hear my name, you're going to hate it because I am a beast." Um, that's what he's become, and he knows it. Uh, no, though thou callest thyself a hotter name than any is in hell. So here he is. He's brave. He's facing down. He's facing down the dragon. He's facing down his dragon. My name's Macbeth. Dun, dun, dun. The devil himself could not pronounce a title more hateful to mine ear. He's fighting for the good. No, no more fearful. So Macbeth is still confident because he's confident that young Seward has been born from a woman. Thou liest, abhorred tyrant. With my sword, I'll prove the lie thou speakest. They fight, and it could be an extended fight. Like a, if it was a Hollywood version of this, there, would be, could, be, there becomes, could be some good action. And then he's slain. So Macbeth is looking over the dead body and he says, Yeah, you were born of a woman, but swords I smile at, weapons I laugh to scorn, brandished by man that's of a woman born. So he's still hubristic. He's still under the spell of the witches. Self-delusion. It's not the witches. The witches are a projection of him, of his own psyche. So it's all self-delusion. It's all psychology, ladies and gentlemen. It's all psychology. Learn from it. Okay, so now we're getting closer, a step closer still. Macduff is on the hunt. We know that Macduff is the boss battle. Uh, he's, the, he's the one that's going to confront him. He's the man of action. That way the noise is. So here's, he's following the action, looking for, he's hunting. He's on the hunt. He wants to kill. And this is what he says here. He says, I'm not going to kill anybody except for, I'm not going to kill any minions. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save my sword for Macbeth is what he said is in this speech. And there, there you go. There's the foil. He's honorable. He values lives of others. He's not going to watch the world burn. He doesn't want the world bur to burn. He's the, uh, he's the Avengers. He's Iron Man and, and his gang who confront Thanos are somewhat sympathetic to... I, I'm not sure. I've only watched the... Uh, I've only I've, I watched it once and I didn't, I didn't really... I, I don't have that much to say about it, but I, there's a little bit of sympathy in those films for Thanos, I think. Um, ultimately, no, of course, because uh, because they recognize the the Joker the Joker esque nihilism in Thanos's uh, uh, world view, and they they reject it rightfully. And uh, but but uh, there might be a little bit of sympathy. I don't know. It's something to think about. Anyway, so Macduff uh, is, is looking for, he refuses to kill anybody else. Here he says, Tyrant, show thy face. If thou beest slain, and with no stroke of mine, my wife and children's ghosts will haunt me still. So he needs revenge. Uh, and just in terms of the plot, the sausage making, everybody loves a good revenge plot. This time it's personal. You know, you've, we've all seen these movies. It increases the intensity, increases the, oh, what's the term for it? There's a term, the, uh, the motive. No, the, even even deeper, there's a, and for filmmaking, storytelling, there's a theme for it. The, yeah, it's, it's, part, it's the motive. It, it increases the intensity of the motive, um, and it drives the hero forward. And now Macduff is our is our hero of action. Malcolm is our hero of, of compassion and thought and, and, and the softer virtues. But we need a man of action now to take out this tyrant. I cannot strike at wretched kerns whose arms are hired to bear their, their weapons, their staves. I'm not going to strike at the minions. I'm not going to strike at the guys who are only hired, these, these mercenaries. Either thou, Macbeth, Macbeth, or else my sword with an unbattered edge, I shall I sheathe again undeeded. So I'm, I'm only going to swing my sword at you. If I can't swing it at you, I'm just going to sheathe it again, undeeded, without having done the, any killing. 
Great, great guy, great guy. He's the Avengers. He's the Iron Man. Value the lives of others. The vital spirit vitalizing the word world. The vital spirit trying to vitalize the world. There thou should be by this great clatter. So he hears the noise over there, and he's, he's, he moves in that direction. Uh, one of greatest note seems bruited. Let me find him fortune, and no more I beg, and, and more I beg not. So, oh, please, luck, let me get this guy, and I won't ask anything else. Uh, there's alarms. Bum, bada, bum, bada, bum. Macduff goes off stage. Enter Malcolm and Seward. This way, my lord, the castle gently rendered. So here's some plot rendering. So Macduff run, runs off one side, and then these guys come in the other side, or maybe after him, or whatever. Um, the castle has been surrendered, has gently rendered. The tyrant's people on both sides fight. So it was an easy battle, because as soon as they got through the gates, half the people said, OK, oh, no, 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 don't, don't, don't kill me. I'm with you guys. I hate this guy. Let's, let's, let's go. I'll help you. Here, he's this way. You know, there, there's that. So, 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 the, so they're pretty lucky. Well, they're not lucky. Uh, the noble thanes do bravely do bravely in the war. The day almost itself itself professes yours, and little is to do. Yeah. So yeah. So the, the, yeah. They're they're. It's it's a it's a it's a cakewalk. They open up the gates, and everybody is happy. Half of the half of the warriors are fighting on their side. We have met the foes that strike beside us. Uh, yeah. So yeah, we've we've encountered our new allies. Enter the castle. Enter, sir, the castle. So, bum, 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 bum. this is really, really the end. And the only thing the audience is now waiting for, and there's tension here. It's good stagecraft. It's good sausage making. It's pretty much done. We've been told that they won the day, but it's not resolved. The, 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 the global arc, that's the global story, the big story, has been resolved. Scotland has been healed. The wasteland has been healed by our healer, the Harry Potter, the Savior, the Messiah, which is Malcolm. But we still have to deal with, there must be retribution. Nemesis must come. And Nemesis comes in the form of Macduff. Nemesis comes for Macbeth. Okay, another part of the field, Macbeth is alone, and soon Macduff enters. But Macbeth says, Why should I play the Roman fool and die on mine own sword? Whilst I see lives, the gashes do better upon them. Now, this is in sharp contrast. The play the Roman fool, That's uh, there was a Roman tradition. Uh, if a general loses a battle, he's looking at the battle and says, oh, God, this is lost, all right? So I'm going to do the honorable thing, and I'm going to fall on my sword. He sticks it under his breastplate, and he falls on his sword, and it kills him. That was the honorable thing for a Roman leader to do. Uh, he says, I'm not going to do that. While I have life in me, the gashes look better on somebody else. Here's the Joker moment. I'm going to take everybody out that I can. And it's in sharp contrast, a sharp, sharp contrast with Macduff, who very, very diligently and very conscientiously avoids unnecessary death, unnecessary suffering. Lovely, lovely. See how the, all the pieces come together? I mentioned in another video the BMW engine. Look at the engine and how all the parts click together when it's a masterpiece. And we're looking at a masterpiece here. Just that little throwaway thing here that didn't really have to be there. It fits so nicely into this, which shows us how vile Macbeth has become. The Joker, he's, he's the, the nihilist that wants to see the world burn. Dun da da da. Nemesis has arrived. Turn, hellhound, turn. And Macbeth, Macbeth knows that 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 there's something that that this is this is bad news. Why? Two reasons. Very interesting. Again, it's Shakespeare, so it's complex. Of all men else, I have avoided thee. Why? But get thee back. My soul is too too much charged with blood of thine already. Now here's where here's where I'd like to argue. We've seen the vileness of him, but through that, it's almost like it's, it's like a swamp, a fetid swamp, a sewer, and out of that sewer you see a pearl, a single pearl kind of struggling to make itself known to the world, you know, before it sinks below the fetid swamp again. There's genuine remorse here. It's not only cowardice. He is he is afraid of death, as we're going to see very shortly. So the coward reemerges, that swamp reemerges and swallows up the pearl. But there's there's genuine remorse here. He he knows that he's killed his 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 children, his 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 family. I have no words, Macduff says. There's no, there's no point in words, and 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 we we like to, we don't like to think that there's that we have to commit violence. Uh, we like to, we like to live in a peaceful world where everything can be solved by words. But sometimes it, it it isn't. I mean, we needed to defeat Hitler. We needed to defeat, you know. We need. There's sometimes you just have to take up the and and do the do the Macduff deed. My voice is in my sword. 
noble words, violent words, violent, vicious words put to good use for the betterment of humanity, the, the, the vital spirit. Thou bloodier villain than terms can give thee out, so I can't they have no words for you. And they fight. Um, thou losest labor, as easy mayest thou the entrenched air with thy keen sword impress as make me bleed. So he's taunting him and saying, you can't hurt me, you can't hurt me. I wasn't, I must not yield to one of woman born. Let, the, let fall thy blade on vulnerable crests, on other people who are vulnerable, not me. I bear a charmed life, which, which must not yield to one of woman born. So he throws it in his face. You can't hurt me. I got the protection of this, this magic spell. Uh, let me back up a little bit here, make sure I don't miss anything. Uh, manhood definition, Macduff plus Malcolm. I think we talked about that. Equals the ideal man. The man of action to take, to, 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 to bring justice to the world through force, through necessary force, when necessary, only when necessary. That's what I, I will insist upon. Only when necessary. Minimal necessary force. Uh, but the compassionate man, those two forces together equal the ideal man. Brute force put to good use plus thoughtful compassion for the common good. Lovely, lovely statement. Lovely, beautiful. Words to live by for men and women. Remember Lady Macbeth, ladies, and remember Macduff and Malcolm, gentlemen. Um, thou losest labor. Yeah, so he's taunting here. He's still filled with hubris. Hubris summons nemesis, Macduff. And Macduff says, now here's this, and as and, and soon as we hear this, of course, the audience is like, oh, okay, how's this going to be resolved? We know that there's a B meaning. The A meaning was nobody because you can't be born from a woman. Everybody, you can't be not born from a woman if you're a human. Uh, so we're waiting for the resolution of this, and we get it. Macduff says, ha, 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 despair thy charm, and let the angel whom thou still hast served tell thee. Macduff was from his mother's womb untimely ripped. So cesarean section is when the woman's having trouble with childbirth, and the doctor has to, the surgeon has to go in through by cutting open the abdomen, and probably the mother died, of course. Yeah, I mean, what, 99%? We don't know in this play, but... Very rarely could a woman survive that back in those days. Um, so theme, equivocation, prophecy comes true. Macbeth and the audience understood meaning A, the witches intended meaning B, and here's the meaning B that the witches could say, we didn't lie. We didn't lie. Here you are. You're going to be killed by a guy who wasn't born of a woman who was born from the surgeon, you could say. You, you know what I mean? It's an equivocation. Uh, accursed be that tongue that tells me so, for it hath cowed my better part of man. So now he's a coward again. So fair enough. There's the swamp, swallowed up the pearl that might have, might have. You could argue this. I'm not. I'm not perfectly convinced of this myself, but I, 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 w I will argue it. I have. Um, here comes the coward again. Uh, different. I, I didn't really point this out as, as, as strongly as I should have. Different versions of this play, different movie versions, uh, will emphasize one or the other. Uh, the version that stars, um, oh God, what's his name? The bald guy, uh, Picard, the Star Trek guy. Oh God, uh, Patrick Stewart. The version that stars Patrick Stewart made him more of a, a villainy villain, more of a psychopathic villain than the Ian McKellen version. And there's there's validity in both of them, as we as we've seen. He's he's a, he's a vile creature. I like Ian McKellen's better. I think it's more believable. I think it's more interesting. He's, it's, he's a more complex character. Uh, but Patrick Stewart is a very different actor. He's more, he's a more of a, he's, he's got that, that hardness that Ian McKellen uh, doesn't have. Or, or Patrick Stewart doesn't have the, the softness, the, the, the more complex side that Ian McKellen has. Um, and be these juggled, juggling fiends no more believed. How many times has Macbeth said this fool fool that palter with us in a double sense that keep the word of, of promise to our ear and break it in our hope that's exactly what banquo said to him banquo said you know they'll double trust they'll win us with double trust and then stab us in the back when they have our trust uh finally he believes it you know how, how many times well look at your life here here i am you know you know, accusing Macbeth of being a fool, but how many times in our lives have we have have we done things that we know to be stupid, and we do them anyway? And not only do we do them, but we do them more than once. 
Um, I'll not fight with thee. So he refuses to fight because he knows he's going to die. He's a coward. Um, now, here's the Marty McFly moment. Uh, for a weak man, it's very easy to say, what are you, chicken? Manhood, insecure man, eager to prove himself. Nobody calls me chicken. So this is exactly what Macduff does. He says, then yield, coward, and live to be the show and gaze of the time. We'll have thee, as our rarer monsters are, painted on a pole and underwrit. Here you may see the tyrant. So he's talking with the rarer monsters. So, you know, the, an expedition might go to Africa and bring back some crocodiles or something and, and, and have all the crocodiles caged and chained up for public display. So Macbeth is a similar monster. He's not a human, as we've already seen. He's been dehumanized, and here he is dehumanized again. So Macduff says, all right. I'm, I'm not going to kill you. I'm going to capture you, and I'm going to hang you. I'm going to I'm going to put you on display. Painted on a pole. I will not yield. So he does the Marty McFly thing and says, "Nobody calls me chicken. I let's fight to kiss the ground before young Malcolm's feet. I will I will not yield to do that to kiss Malcolm's feet, and to be baited with the rabble's curse. So he's not going to be baited. Here's the image of the 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 bear again the bear baiting it was called bear baiting so I'm not going to do that I'm not going to allow myself to be a spectacle like that though Burnham would to, to be come to Dunsinane and thou opposed being of no woman born yet I will try the last so there's a reminder there's some sausages there's a reminder to the audience of remember remember we had all these neat little tricks and here they are resolved so that's a little cuteness there uh, but he says yeah, I will try the last he 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 Here's a return to pure physical courage that we knew Macbeth had we, from the whole, from the very, very beginning. He ends as he began, you could argue, fighting nobly, but it's not. It's, it's minus the love and the honor. It's a desperate existential thrashing at fate is what it is, uh, like, like the Joker, uh, a despairing, savage, last gasp. At, at, at some kind of life, uh, which is no life. Before my body, I throw my warlike shield. There he goes. Lay on Macduff and damned be him that first cries, hold enough. So he does. He ends with this pure, pure strength. Uh, I don't know what to make of that, except it's a, it's a corrupt version of, of, of heroism. Like the Joker, the Joker's courage and strength is a corrupt courage and strength. I can't wait till Joker 2. I hope they come up with another one. I'd like to see how that guy moves forward. And if they if they continue with the complexity, if they show us in the Joker that pearl in the sewage, if they show us that 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 we that was built up beautifully throughout that film. We'll we'll see. We'll see. Um okay, so retreat. So they said they 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 go off fighting and of course we know that who's who's going to win. Now, this is really interesting. This is the final wrap-up. It's all over. This is the end of the play. Congratulations, you're almost there. Uh, and there's some very, there's a wrapping up of the themes that, that I've been driving home since we started this, uh, the, the, the theme of manhood in particular. Well, let's have a look. So Malcolm Seward, Ross, and, and all the boys come out. I would the friends we miss were safe arrived. Now, the first words out of Malcolm's mouth are the thoughts of pity for the slain. That's a leader. That's a leader. Your first thought is for the good of the people, not for your own self-preservation. Now think of the leaders we've had throughout time in recent memory. Who are the ones that think first about the people? It's really hard to tell because they're all so full of crap because they have to be to maintain power. We like to think of Obama as the good guy. That's debatable. We, do, we don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Uh, I don't know. We like to think of our heroes like, you know, Churchill or Churchill who helped beat back the Voldemort, the Macbeth Voldemort Hitler. We like to think of him as that kind of hero, but he might have been motivated by some baser instincts as well. We don't know. But anyway, here's the ideal. Here's Shakespeare showing us the ideal. Your first thought is with the goodness of people. I wish our friends, our dead friends were here. Or our missing friends are here. Some must go off, and yet by these I see so great a day as this is cheaply bought. So some are going to die. That's the price of courage. That's the price of freedom. That's the price of, 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 of healing the wasteland. The sacrifice must be made. Now the ending here is about sacrifice, the noble sacrifice, and meaning the existentialist 
the answer to the existentialist crisis of meaning is here, and I love it. It's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, and yet, it, it was cheaply bought. So this great day was cheaply bought, which means we didn't lose that many. It could have been a lot worse. Macduff is missing. Ooh, he's thinking, getting in particulars now. Where, where is Macduff? And we don't know where your son is. Ross says, your son, my lord, has paid a soldier's debt. So Ross, again, has the bad job of giving the bad news of the death. And he says to Seward, uh, your son is dead. He only lived but till he was a man. So he's a young man. He just he was just a couple of days ago. He's a boy. The witch no sooner had his prowess confirmed in the unshrinking station where he fought, but like a man he died. Now here's the definition of manhood, the sacrifice. Uh, 1917, I'm thinking of that movie again. The sacrifice, the sacrifice, the beautiful sacrifice, uh, the saddest thing in the world. Um, and again, these are these, as I mentioned before, all of this, the Avengers sacrifices, uh, this Macbethian sacrifice, not the Macbethian, the sea, young Seawardian sacrifice, the sacrifice of nineteen eighteen of nineteen seventeen, that movie, that sacrifice, the, that's at this the, the the exaggerated level. The movie Dunkirk did the same thing, the sacrifice, a whole nation sacrificing itself to save those boys and 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 whoever else, the women, if there were women on the boats as well. The 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 sacrif the, the, the the big cosmic exaggerated sacrifice that we are lucky living we are lucky to not be living through right now. But we also make them on our daily levels. This is how the hero's journey motif works, is that at, at, on, the, on the, again, as I said, our mythology, which is what this is, the Avengers is a form of mythology. All of these stories, Dunkirk has become part of our mythology. 1917, these sacrifice stories have become part of our, our myth mythology. It's a projection of our individual psyches. Even you and I, in our small ways, we make these sacrifices. You're studying. You're spending hours here studying instead of going off and playing with your video games with your friends or sitting, sipping coffee in a Starbucks and having fun laughing with your friends, watching stupid videos on YouTube. You're not doing that. You're actually sacrificing your time right now. For what? So that you can participate in, the, in, the, in life's experience. You, you can become independent from your parents so they don't have to feed you for the rest of their lives. So you take care of yourself, then you become responsible to your own family, and so you're sacrificing yourself for your own family. Um, it, it, it is. It, it's, it, these grander narratives are, ref, are grand reflections, exaggerated reflections of our individual life's journey, and it's quite beautiful. So here he is. He died like a man, sacrificing himself for the greater good. Uh, then is he dead? So here's Seward. We don't even know Seward, but, but we all know what sacrifice means, and so we can relate to this. I and brought off the field, your cause of sorrow must not be measured by his worth, for then it hath no end. So, so he was worth. How do you die nobly? How do you live a good life? Here's how you live a good life. You give your life to, the, to, to you, at the, when you're 80 years old on your deathbed, you look back at your life and you say, what have I done to make the world a better place? And if you can look back and you can say that your, your worth can be measured by a lot of good, that you've done to others and not just to your to build yourself a new swimming pool in your backyard then you can say you've lived a decent life so here's here's the comment it's a it's a comment that contrasts sharply with the with the selfishness of macbeth um theme existentialism uh plus the manhood definition death as noble sacrifice for the greater good love it's love it's love it's it's, it's love love of humanity Versus the death, destruction as nihilistic rampage born of ego, spite, and resentment. The Joker, Macbeth, Hitler, uh, high school shooters, all of, all of those kinds of things. There's your, there are your choices, ladies and gentlemen. Exaggerated choices. Now, in our individual lives, when we do something to spite our coworker or whatever, we make that Macbethian choice to be spiteful or to try to be that vital spirit to vitalize the world. Why then, God's soldier he be? There he is. He's firmly in, on the side of good. Uh, by the way, the great chain of being has been reestablished. Did I mention that in my notes? Yeah, the great chain of being has been reestablished, and uh, and access to to the grace of God has been uh, reconnected to the world. Had I as many sons as I have hairs, I would not wish them a fairer death. There it is. That's how I want to die. I want to die, of course, not brutally 
with a sword through my gut, but I want to die. I want to look at my life when I'm on my deathbed, and I want to look back and I say, I, I did a good job for others. It's 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 a worthy. It's 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 a noble purpose. And it 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 helps you avoid the despair and the alienation. Go back up to the tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow speech. That's the other option. That's death A. This is death B. Aim for death B. Existentialism, alienation, young Seward is the foil. His death is meaningful. Macbeth dies in despair, convinced of the meaninglessness of life because he was cut off from his value structure, which is love. Uh, um, yeah, it's it's so true. It's it's a lovely. And so his knell is knolled. Ask not for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. So again, when we watch see young Seward's death here, we are reminded of our own options. We compare the two, Macbeth and young Seward. We compare the two. This is why this crazy character that we don't even know, we never even really met him. That's why it's uh, uh, Shakespeare puts him at the end here, to make this contrast, to make this statement. Now, this is a statement. This is coming from Shakespeare. This is, this is what he believes to be the way to live and and it's and it's and he puts it on the page for us to 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 remind us of of the options macbeth uh, shakespeare is despairing in other plays uh king lear is probably his most despairing it's grim that's a grim play this this is a grim play of course as we've seen but here shakespeare gives us a way out he gives us an option he says here you go ladies and gentlemen you don't want to do that you want to go there so it ends on a positive note, a very positive note, lovely, beautiful. The vital spirit vitalizes, and in his death, it's even more beautiful, I suppose, because of the pathos involved. It's the piata, piata. Go, go have a look at that. It's the piata. Um, piata? No. Uh, yeah, the piata. That's the, the, the statue by Michelangelo of the Virgin Mary um, holding the, the sacrificed son. The sacrificed hero. This is what young Seward is. He's the sacrificed Jesus, the sacrificed Christ, uh, and that's 1917 as well. Uh, that young man was the sacrificed, uh, the sacrificed Christ, the sacrificed hero. Lovely, sad, sad, cosmic, universal. Um, he's worth more sorrow, and that I'll spend for him. So Malcolm repeats the statement. He's he, he's a worthy man. It's a worthy death. It's a worthy life that that man has lived. He's worth no more. They say he departed well and paid his score. And so God be with him. Here comes newer comfort. Okay, so they, they put young Seward to rest honorably. Honor. Gosh, honor. Re-enter Macduff with Macbeth's head. Now we get back to the brutal, the brutal Macduff. Macduff is associated. Malcolm associated with the tender passions, with the tender passions, with the tenderness, the womanly, the motherly, the motherly father. Um, lovely. We also need the, the 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 fatherly father. We also need the brute who's able to harness his shadow and take out the monster, destroy the monster. Here comes here comes Perseus with the Gorgon's head. Here comes the Hobbit with the dragon's heart. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. We got to do that too. Hail King. And what's his first words out of his mouth? His first words out of his mouth are not, I did this, I should be king. It's not that. It's not ego. It's, again, the sacrifice. Macduff has sacrificed his, 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 his powers, his, his horrible powers to cut someone's head off. He's given it as a gift to humanity. He's, he's committed horrors for the greater good. He's sullied himself for the greater good. For so thou art, you are our good king, you are the rightful man. Behold, where stands the usurper's cursed head? Here is Macduff, Macbeth's head. The time is free, the wasteland has been healed. I see thee compassed with the kingdom's pearl that speak my salutation in their minds, whose voices I desire aloud with mine. Hail, king of Scotland. So he's got the, uh, the crown on his head, and he is the king. Hail, king of Scotland. Macduff is a foil. He immediately gives the kingship to Duncan, to, Ma to Malcolm, uh, the manhood theme. That's a good man. That's a good man. Harness your power. Do good in the world. Selflessness, duty, honor, purpose, and meaning. And you avoid the existential crisis at the end of your life or during your life. Hail, King of Scotland. 
we shall not spend an, uh, a large expense of time before we reckon with your several loves. And here's the gracious Malcolm is saying, we owe you a great debt and we will repay that debt very, very soon before too much time has gone over. We will reckon with your loves and make you even with us. Yes, we owe you a great debt and we shall pay that debt. My thanes and kinsmen, henceforth be earls, the first that ever Scotland in such an honor named. Yeah, I guess this is some history here. So I guess the, there was a the title earls didn't exist in Scotland. So maybe he imported that from from his time in England. Here's a handy thing. So he rewards them with new titles and new lands or whatever. Uh, what's more to do, which would be planted newly with the time as calling home our exiled friends abroad. So he's probably thinking of Donald Bain and Donald Bain's retinue who would have gone with them. So we're going to call all of, our, all of our things that have fled, we can call them back, that fled the snares of watchful tyranny. Yes. Restoration of order, of balance, the great chain of being healed, the wasteland is healed. Now people can come back and their land can flourish. Life has been restored. Uh, the rivers of life restored after the tyrant had hoarded all of that, that vitality. Produced forth, uh, producing forth the cruel ministers of this dead butcher with his fiend-like queen, who, as it was, as it is thought, by self and violent hands, took off her life. So now we hear that uh, Lady Macbeth has committed suicide, which we kind of already pieced together. This and what needful else that calls upon us by the grace of grace, we will perform in measure time and place look at the language look at the language why a why not b why these particular words because shakespeare's saying measure time and place it's order balance order and balance versus the chaos that uh, the lack of this brings on uh, connection to god and goodness is restored so thanks to all at once and to each one whom we invite to see us crowned at schoon so he's going to go to the place where Macbeth went to Schoon to be crowned. Okay, so, yeah, thank you very much for for joining me. Um, I hope you got something out of it. I hope you got something out of it. Uh, the two things, at least. An understanding of the, of the, of the greater themes uh, and the, the beauty of the themes that Shakespeare wants us to, to understand. And some good marks in school. So take all this stuff and build your essay. I, I might in another video I might break down how to write the essay, the telling, showing, explain, come up with a thesis, all that kind of stuff. But you've got lots of you've got lots of material for it now. So I hope I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you get something out of it, and I hope to see you with my next videos. Um, Romeo and Juliet's going to be next. Thanks for watching. <laughs>